He was at Deflate Gate yesterday. Did were you told to go or did you want to go to this, Matt? No, nobody has nobody assigned me to go. I'm I should <laughs> admit up front I'm a Patriots fan. I grew up in Boston and I just decided to go to court yesterday and check it out and it was just interesting, so I decided to, to tweet out a few things after after the case. Okay, what did you find out? What did? Uh, how can you enlighten us on what you saw yesterday or heard? Well, I, don't, I think most of the news reports that came out yesterday afternoon were pretty accurate. the The main thing was that the judge clearly, you know, was sending a message to the NFL, and I, I think it was actually obvious in the first fifteen seconds of the hearing because. Um, uh, Brady's lawyer, Jeffrey Kessler, got up and he, he told the judge, uh, Berman, that um, first I want to start by summarizing the NFL's position, which is that your honor must defer to their judgment. And immediately Judge Berman interrupts them and mm. says, well, you know, federal judges have a little trouble deferring. And that's the whole thing right there. I mean, the NFL's basic case is that the judge doesn't have a role here uh, and that he shouldn't put his hands on the arbitration agreement. And right away, he's telling them that that's not true. I don't accept that. Uh, I do have a role, and it just got worse from there for the NFL. Okay, where does the, how does this end up? Uh, well, I mean, it's it's hard to say. Clearly, the judge clearly is signaling that if he has to rule on this, if they don't settle, that it's not going to be good for the NFL. Um, I would imagine that he would vacate. Suspension, although who knows? I mean, uh, crazier things have happened, and, and uh, arbitration cases aren't typically uh, vacated. But this does seem to be kind of an extreme case, and he does seem both confused and irritated by the whole thing. Uh, it, it seems like he's not happy that he has to take up uh, the taxpayers' resources to do this. So I would think that he vacates it, but then, of course, it's up to the NFL whether they appeal and, and how, how long it goes on, and I imagine they would appeal. I also look at this, and it's far more than just somebody let the football or air out of football. If if that's really what happened, it. I mean, this is this is politics here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's. I think it's quickly morphed into something far bigger than this little Picayune uh, cheating scandal. Um, you know, it's it's already turned into a thing where this is a major confrontation between the league and the union. And I think what happened was this started off as the league was certain that they had a lot more on Tom Brady, and they invested a lot in finding uh, out what that was. And when they didn't, they doubled down, and they decided to to flex all the muscle that they thought the CBA afforded them to make the case stick. But when it didn't quite stick, then they overreached, and now the union is in a position where it gets to re-argue the whole issue of how much power they gave to the commissioner. And so now it's this huge thing over whether or not they're going to rewrite the CBA and how much power the, the league has over the players. And there's no turning back, for, I think, for either side at this point. It's just turned into, you know, a total krieg at this point. Okay, the media is involved in this. We love it. Um, but are we doing a service to the fan bit? Do the fans really care about this, or is this the media... Uh, I guess being all involved, all in, uh, this all-encompassing uh, story here, that it's more of them. It's like steroids. It seems like the media is more concerned. The fans move on with this. Like, okay, what's tell me if Brady's there opening night, if I'm going to draft him on my fantasy team, and I, I'm going to take the Patriots and give the points. Yeah, no, well, first of all, there's two groups of fans here. What, there's, the, there's New England fans who are like – a late stage Lenny Bruce at this point. They're just <laughs> completely obsessed with the injustice of it all and getting overweight and losing their sense of humor. And they they are completely all in on this thing. But you're not like that, right? I am totally like that. I think I've you know I've probably gained 15 pounds since this started just reading all this stuff online. But if you listen to Boston Sports Radio, that's all they talk about all the time, 24 hours a day. They don't even they don't even give the game scores. So the rest of the country, of course, is totally bored by this thing. And I think that's that's the problem for the league, which is that you know they're heading into what should be you know a great season. They've had they've had all time ratings highs, and instead of talking about football, all everybody's talking about this. And of course, the media is obsessed with this because we we created the story. Yes. Uh, you know, it, it was. A, a tiny, you know, a side note of a story that leading into the, the Super Bowl, and it grew into not just the biggest sports story, but the biggest news story of the year. It's um, we're, we're committed as much as the league is at this point. All right, explain this to me because I think that 
If you're looking at Robert Kraft, I thought Kraft did a disservice to Tom Brady and his case by taking the largest fine in NFL history. And all of a sudden being surprised that this wasn't a wink, wink, nod, nod. Hey, if you take the punishment, fall on the sword, I'll let Tommy play opening night. How did that happen, Matt? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's clearly a mystery. When, when that happened, I think everybody in New England, well, first of all, they were, they were furious when that happened because, they, they, again, for them, this is like, you know, William Wallace or, or you know, they, they want to fight to the death on this thing, um, and, and Kraft didn't do that. And I think everybody assumed that there was a quid pro quo that had been worked out yeah. behind the scenes. And then it turns out that not only was there no quid pro quo, but it actually got significantly worse from there. Um, so Kraft, uh, I think, boxed himself in with that decision. Uh, and now he's, he's just as, as much on the outs uh, with the rest of the league as Al Davis ever was. You know, and there's, he's neither here nor there. He's not really in with you know, the Patriots fans don't completely embrace him still because of what he did. And the league is certainly not happy with him. So I, you have to wonder about that decision. That was a strange decision. He's Matt Taibbi of Rolling Stone joining us, Dan Patrick Show. If I gave you two questions for Brady today or the commissioner today, who would you take? Uh, I would take the commissioner, I think. I mean, I, I think we know what, what, uh, what Brady would answer to just about everything because he's, he's already testified, and we've already seen that you know, agonizing, uh, you know, endless testimony that he went through in that, in, in that hearing. But the commissioner hasn't really answered a whole lot of questions about this, and that, it would be interesting to... Well, what would you hit him with? Uh, I guess, you know... the. The one mystery that that it hasn't really been reported on in this story is how did this all start? Because you know there have been five or six different versions of where this story came from. There was originally the idea that the Quell Jackson felt the ball was too soft when he caught the interception, and that turned out not to be true. Then there was the story that the the cold officials in the sideline thought it was too soft when, and that turned out not to be true either. That they got a letter from the Ravens, maybe that that. that uh, told them to look out for this. So if, if there is actually a real source that says the Patriots do this and we've seen them doing this before, well, that adds, adds a lot more credence to this to this story if, if there is something out there. If there's something they're not telling us about this scandal, then then they should let us know. And yeah. I think the commissioner should, should, should let us know. Yeah, and we keep hearing that there is something else attached to this. Um, if you could spend the day with Brady or Donald Trump, Probably Donald Trump. I mean, he's. Although the only thing is, you know, Brady. Brady is, I guess, probably a different person in private than he is in public. Whereas Trump has no filter, I would guess, in either place. So, um, you probably it would probably be more interesting to hang out with Brady just because you'd learn more. But uh, but Trump is pretty fun. I mean, I, I, this is this is certainly the most fun campaign season that I've ever covered. So. Are you going back to court on August thirty first? I may, uh, if, I, if I'm in town, yeah, sure, absolutely. Although, you know, what was unusual about yesterday is that because Brady and Goodell weren't there, there weren't any casual fans in the place. So, um, you know, we didn't have to sit in an over, overflow room or anything like that. So I, I think because Brady is likely to be there next time, the courthouse is going to be much more packed, and it's not clear that every, every reporter is going to get in. So I'll try, but we'll see. But are you going to be a fanboy when Brady walks by? Will you... <laughs> Like swoon or something. <gasps> Throw my panties out. Oh, Tom, Tom. <laughs> yeah, of you're course, not I'm planning on fan. going it, but once you're in the moment there, when Brady walks by and he's got that look, he's got the Zoolander look, he's got the dark <laughs> suit on, and he all of a sudden looks over to you, and you don't know if he's looking at you, and then your reaction's going to be what? I'm going to, I mean, I'll fall to pieces, right? I'll have to. I mean, I can't, uh, can't plan for anything oh, else. So. Oh, Tom. Oh, Tom. <laughs> oh, keep fighting a good fight, Matt. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thanks a lot. Tom. All right. Take Matt care. Taibbi.